Another March victory for MSU. This one by damn near 20 points. We got Carter Elliott of Sleepers Media and Spartans Illustrated to party with us. Oh, woohoo! Let's go, baby. You are locked on Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. This March Madness victory episode of Lockdown Spartans is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Spartan friends, Spartan family. It's been a while since we've been this happy to see each other, gang. Uh, Here we are in a victory episode of Locked on Spartans. It's not just me, your host, Matt Sheehan, blabbing up and down. Although if you do have questions or comments, hit us up, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com. We're also joined by the one, the only Carter Elliott of Spartans Illustrated, Sleepers Media. Carter, let's get a vibe check, my man. How are we doing over there? Uh, You know what? Uh, You know I'm one that always errs on the side of just a little sprinkle of, like, you know, holding back. I don't want to fully commit myself. And you know what? I'm not going to do that. But in just regards to this game, that couldn't have gone any better. That was nice. Never (laughs) trailed. Got Tyson Walker looking great, healthy. Jay Nakins, welcome back. My, My sir, I missed you. I missed you so, so much. Man, what I mean, what a game. You really can't ask for anything more, to be honest with you. If you do, I think you're being just a just a wee bit greedy. There's no way as a state fan you can watch that game and be like, oh, they well, they could have done this a little better. Mm-hmm. Not really, because there is so much that could put a twinkle in our eye. We're talking individual performances, like you said, Tyson Walker, magician. He puts up 19 points. Jaden Akins, where art thou? Well, he was just saving it all for his first March Madness game of the season. He had 15 points, seven rebounds, one block, one steal. He was a menace on both sides of the floor. The only thing he did wrong was miss what would have been the best dunk of the tournament at the end of the game there. But he was sensational for Michigan State. Also, the center position, maybe collectively having their best game of the season. We got to pull out Mike Sissoko. Of course, we have been hard on him on this show many a time. We could have a debate later on after recording whether we're right or wrong for that, but he played his best game of his season, I think. Just two points. We're talking nine rebounds. Incredibly active on defense. He had a block, too. And, folks, we're starting the nickname here. As corny as it may be, it's not Monty Sissoko. It is Dennis Ramadan with (laughs) grabbing grabbing every single rebound possible. He's not eating from sun up to sundown, but he was gobbling up every single rebound that Mississippi State had to offer for him. He played outstanding. The defense, my God, was absolutely suffocating the entire game. Now, Mississippi State, they had really good defense too. They had 19 points off of turnovers, but Michigan State, 29 points off of turnovers. Carter, after rambling about all that goodness, what? gives you the brightest twinkle in your eye moving forward as we take on North Carolina, most likely on Saturday. You know, uh, the play of Jay Nakins, I think, is the one that just comes to mind automatically. And, uh, you know, with his ability to knock down shots, you know, combined with his ability on the defensive end, because Josh Harbour was able to get going a little bit there towards the end of the first half, a little bit in the second half there. But if I could, I actually do plan on going back and just watching Jay Nakins on Hubbard possessions. He was cutting off the water like he was yeah. he had that he had him, he had him in, in shambles. Right. Um, a lot of the defensive mistakes came from like over helping and help side defense, which is, you know, something that can be fixable. That's just nitpicky. But mm-hmm. uh, if Jay Nakins is going to give us this, then that changes a lot of things for this basketball team, because you combine Jay Nakins with, you know, the consistent Malik Hall we've been getting with uh, Tyson Walker, maybe having that week off, getting that groin a little bit healthier. If we cut down on the turnovers in this game, we probably win by 30. Like, we would have yeah. blew them out the water. It would have never been in, even in doubt. And then uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out the, w- what the coaching staff did defensively, especially the game plan, was, oh, just chef's kiss. Sometimes you forget yeah. that if you give – you can't give Izzo 
enough time. To, you can't give Izzo a right. game plan for you. That's not that's not fair. That's just not. You can't you can't lock Jan. You can't have Jan and Izzo going head to head. And Izzo has a week to look you dead in your soul and know what he's gonna do. That man was special with the defensive game plan. The the doubling of Tolu Smith. The fact that you recognize that the other guys. You know, if DJ Jeffries hits a shot. Tip your jersey to him. He didn't hit many. Like it, right. it was, it was, it was, it was flawless, man. Like I, I got a big old smile. I'm sending random smile emojis just to everybody, just to let them know where I'm at. <laughs> Tolu Smith, uh, look, he averages 15 and 8. I was terrified of him when I saw this matchup. Uh, they held him, Carter, to nine points, two rebounds, two rebounds for this guy. Someone on this show between the two of us bet Tolu Smith over eight rebounds at minus 150. I'm not going to say who it was, but uh, someone wearing green gave FanDuel a very nice donation here before the game. And uh, I don't care. I'm thrilled. <laughs> To lose that money, but let's pull out the Josh Hubbard defense, or rather the defense on Josh Hubbard, because at the end of the first half, he's getting hot. He has 13 points, five of nine shooting, and just like you said, they're overhelping on other guys. And I'm in my house thinking, uh, yeah, it's uh pretty widely known that there's one guy on this team that could shoot Mississippi State back in the game. Let's just leave him with no one around him. And I was pretty upset at halftime, but then they get out of the locker room. Josh Hubbard uh, got outscored by Davis Smith in the second half. Josh Hubbard, two points, one of nine shooting, 0 of six from three-point land. They had this guy fighting demons the entire second half. But that is something that we have lamented about the entire season. Look, again, we've been very hard on this team. All right? A lot of it justified, I think, in my opinion. They've lost 14 times. But one thing that we never really dogged on these guys about was their defense, specifically the perimeter defense. Now, granted, today it was all over the court. The defense was great, but that's something that has me believing. Now, I'm not going to call my shot. I'm not going to get too high in my supply and say, I guarantee you'll win against North Carolina. But it's stuff like that that has me kind of hopeful for Saturday. That, oh, my God, that is some of the nastiest defense you could find in the country here, Carter. Am I ahead yeah. of my skis or, or am I bang on here? No, you're not. The thing is, like, if you look at the whole season as a whole, it, defense has never really been the issue. It's the fact that we're losing games – 60 to 55 like it's the fact that we're not getting you know uh constant production out of the hogars the hate the akins of the world um and you know tyson was hindered and Bleak hall was fairly consistent throughout the whole big 10 season i really don't have much to Mm -hmm. say about him but like we are not when i say we i mean the spartans they're at a position where yes they might not have like the most talented center position they might not have the most even like bench production at that, even though I do, I do think that book did some good things today. Trey Holloman was a little bit slow, but he had his moments as well. You really can't ask for too much for those guys. But we, there just needs to be an emphasis on defense, and then the four top guys. Like let's just roll with those four top guys. Let's roll yep. Aikens. Let's roll Hall. Hogard does his thing. Tyson does the Tyson thing, and let's play defense and see where that gets us. And you know what? If that ends in like us going to the crib. I'll be fine with that. I mean, I won't be fine with that. I'll be calling you to console me, but like <laughs> I will eventually get over it. That's the thing though. But yeah, uh, it, we've been saying all year and to sum it up is the margin for error with this team is small because of, you know, consistency issues, offensive issues and other things like that. But if we're going to get this Akins and this Tyson, I I don't want to okay. do it. I don't want to <laughs> do it, but can Actually, no, I'm going to do it. I, I want you. I want you, UNC. I want you. I want to look Hubert Davis in the eyes. I want to look Armando Baycott dead in his eyes, and I want you. You're going to have to beat me. I want yep. you now. I've, got, I've gotten there. Why not? Why not? Why not us? Why not us? Because, Carter, this is a stat that I've thrown around this week. Eight of the last ten tournaments, at least one one seed does not move on to the second weekend. I know it's a little cherry picking here, but, hey, odds are 80% of the tournaments in the last decade, at least one of the four one seeds isn't going to the Sweet 16. Why not us? Why not? Why not us? Why not us? God, this is so much fun. Oh, this is great. Uh, Carter, we're going to talk a little more about this game, but first need to send you to the bench. I'm so sorry. I hate to do this. I love you, Carter. But first need to talk the people's ears off about Manscaped. That's right. New friend of the program. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season 
season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code locked on. That's all one word locked on for not just 20% off, but free shipping. Folks, let's talk a little bit more about the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. And hey, if you hate making a mess out there, this thing is waterproof. Take it in the shower, the bathtub. Heck, screw it. Go to the ocean with this thing. Who's going to stop you? Maybe the authorities on that last one. But hey, if you're bold enough, go ahead and take it wherever the water is. The, the, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is the greatest for your below the belt care. Get 20% off in free shipping with code locked on at manscaped.com. That's 20% off in free shipping with code locked on at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Also, you need to talk your ears off about game time. If you're in the Charlotte region, hey. There's a game Saturday that you may or may not want to go to. Or, hey, even if you're just back here in Michigan, you want to catch a concert, you want to catch a show, you want to catch another sporting event, Game Time is the best place to find your tickets. I love Game Times. Game Time for a list of reasons. And if you know me, you know I like saving myself a little bit of money here. Get their flash deals throughout the week. All right, just go ahead, look at the event that's five days away. You're going to find some of the best deals for those tickets possible at that time. Or if you're a procrastinator, you're walking up to the stadium, you don't have tickets, their last-minute deals are also second to none. Game time is so easy. Two taps, tickets are sent straight to your phone. You're not going to rummage through your email wondering, oh, my God, I have no service. Where are the tickets going to get here? Guys, it really is that easy. So what are you waiting for? Download the Game Time app, take the guesswork out of buying tickets, and create an account and use code Locked On, all one word, Locked On, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Let's drag the one, the only Carter Elliott of Sleepers Media of Spars Illustrated back into the mix here. And Carter, let, let's just rewind the clock back a little bit or you know what maybe not because the question is when did you start to feel good about this game was it early on or did you did you not settle down until five minutes after the clock hit zero T take me through the mind of carter here uh i settled in oh that, that's tough I, I think i settled in in the second half when i when right at the start i came out and i, or I came out to see the game and i saw that jay nakers was on hubbard and i i could tell that they were just going to do the whole akins on him shut the water off thing. But to be honest with you, I really didn't feel in doubt at any point of this game, to be honest with you. Like coming into it, I like Michigan State's advantage. I like the Michigan, I like the matchups that they can take advantage of. I like the size of Michigan State guards going up against Hubbard, making it very difficult for him. And then the thought that Coach Izzo might do the doubling of Tolu Smith, which he ended up doing in this game. So yeah. it was fairly a stress-free game. Um, it was good to see them come out locked in though i will say that like this is a, a tradition like no other is this team getting out to slow starts right. and they did not do that in this game uh jay nake is not going down early hogar was able to tyson um that transition tyson three into a timeout was a movie i i it's it's something that moves me every single time uh that was i mean to be honest with you there was really not a stressful point of that game which you know it, it, it felt good that's good for you because I didn't settle down until <laughs> it was very clear. Mississippi state had no intention of even trying to come back in this game with like roughly two minutes and 30 seconds left. Michigan state grabbed an offensive rebound. And I think it was Akins and Sissoko dapping each other up while the game's going on. And that's, that's when my heart rate dropped below 200 beats per minute, but God, it's like, I'm just pathetic during these games, man. How, how are you during Are you pacing the floor or like what would take me to the Carter household now? Like how? Yeah. So how it, 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 it's a classic uh, track between like sitting on the couch and then walking, just pacing closer yeah. to the TV, standing off to the side, standing up. And I do like, I usually do the arm cross and I just kind of stand there. So a couple, a lot of yelling. Yeah. Um, I definitely have to be unbothered at the time. Uh, my wife actually went into the office today when she didn't have to, because I think she understood, sure. what was, she understood what was to come, whether for good or bad. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm a nervous wreck most games, and I'm okay with it. You just got to embrace it. 
I, 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 it's so embarrassing what I do over here. I say things that don't even make sense over here. Like it was just me and my six months old and he's under the weather. So like I, I'm holding him. He hits Tyson Walker hits that transition three. And it's just me and him in the house. And I start pacing around with a an imaginary phone up to my ear saying, answer the phone and talk nice to me. And then, the, <laughs> and then the commercial break comes around and I'm like, what the hell did that even mean? What am I like? What am it I makes, saying? It makes like, sense to me. <laughs> like, it makes I, a lot of sense to me. It was it was much more profanity laced than that. But I was like, talk effing nice to me. And then after like the adrenaline goes away, thirty seconds later during the break, it's like, wh- who am? What? Who do I think I am? That was the lamest, whitest thing I could have possibly said. But whatever, man. Hey, just words leave my mouth that make no sense in March. All right, now I'll steer this conversation back to actually on the basketball court here because. Look, I assume the Wagner Seahawks, despite their best efforts, will not beat North Carolina. I, one thing that was interesting about these first two round matchups, Mississippi State and UNC, it's a pretty like basic, broad takeaway here. So, hey, they got a really good point guard. Both teams do. Josh Hubbard, RJ Davis, and they have a really good big man, Tolu Smith, and of course, Armando Baycott. Do you think it's as easy as to look at that as if it's like a cookie cutter of both teams and that could give us extra optimism or... Obviously, UNC is better than Mississippi State, but is it more than just that? You want you want the truth? Or you want me to lie to you? It should be straight, man. I I'll always watch straight talk. I'll shoot, I'll shoot, I'll shoot you straight here. Um, it, it unfortunately is not because the the thing is like R.J. Davis is all American. R.J. Davis is very good. <laughs> a, a, R.J. Davis is a top five guard in this tournament. Like, yeah. uh, and Armando Baycott is an all American as well. Like, I. I I think Armando might have been third team, possibly. I don't know. He's an All-American level type player. RJ Davis is ACC player of the year, All-American level player. It's a little bit different. Uh, The thing about Hubbard that scares you the most is that he is like the microwave type guy, where it's like one game, 30 ball, and he shoots 47% from the field. Next game, you know, 14 points, 27% from the field. Like, that's just the type of player he is. He's electric. He's a young freshman. He'll probably figure it out. But R.J. Davis is a different he, – he's a different piece. That's a, He's a bad man. He operates great in the pick and roll. He can shoot the ball. He can really do a lot of different things and put pressure um, on the defense. Now, on the flip side of that, we have a lot of good guards that can de- that, that can defend. So, you know, there there's opportunity and space for the Michigan State guards to step up and take that challenge of R.J. Davis um, and try to slow him down. Down low, Armando Baycott is definitely a guy that can score the ball with his back to the basket. But the one thing is that I think gives me hope for this game if we do come to UNC. One, Armando Baycott can kind of sleepwalk through games sometimes because they don't want to, one, either give him the ball, or two, he just chooses to kind of sleepwalk through games. I don't know. I mean, gotcha. it, it might have to do with the fact that he's 27 and he's just like, I don't know about <laughs> basketball, but I don't know. But he, he can sleepwalk through yeah. games a lot of the times. Um, and then the other thing, a, th- a working theory that I got going. Not sure if it's it's going to come to fruition or not. Their transfers, Cormac Ryan and Harrison Ingram, have been have been great this year. Harrison Ingram more than Cormac Ryan, but Cormac Ryan's had some big games. He had a big game against Duke at Cameron. You know, of course, a, a white guy named Cormac Ryan transfers in and goes crazy at Cameron. That's a that's a Shocker. story as, yeah. as old as time. <laughs> um, but I think the thing is that these guys aren't they never played in this setting. Like the NCAA March, like the tournament is different. Um, and they've never been in this position where like they're the number one seed. They're playing in the tournament. They're playing a Tom Izzo team. It's a little bit different. And, you know, yes, they were, they were good players, but let's also not forget they came from losing programs. Stanford stinks. Notre Dame also stinks like that. Like they're not, they are not winners. They're winning this season, but yeah, you know, it's it's a whole different thing when you get in that tournament. That's all I'm saying. So they want like to take up that yeah. Michigan State's going to have nothing but space and opportunity to take advantage of. I like that a lot. That's what I'm talking about. Anything that we didn't hit on that you want to bring up? Because really quick, I do want to bring up that I was thrilled with how this game was officiated. Oh, like, that dude. was great. 16 combined free throws, and they all how? came in the second half. That was nice. How nice was it just to watch a game go up and down, up and down? Oh, my and God. There's just no, like, whistles and free throws. It was it was refreshing. Fluid basketball in this climate, in mm-hmm. this economy? What, are they out of their minds over there? Are they nuts? But that, that was beautiful to see. I, I did appreciate seeing that. So I just, I just had to point that out really quick. Um, but, yeah, anything that you t- took away from this game that you just wanted to – 
talk about here before we go. Uh, I think I t- I think I touched on everything I wanted to. I yeah. will say that I needed that Jay Nakins oop to go down. I needed that because I know there would have been a perfect picture of it too. You remember when Ola Depot almost had that alley oop when they were playing Michigan? Like that. I picture. remember where I was for that. That that that's how nice of a miss that was. I was at a restaurant called Googs in Holland watching that. Like. <laughs> That was a remember where you were moment, and it was for a miss dunk. So, yes, I do know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Greatest miss of all time. That's one. The Jay Nakins who that's two right there. Yeah. There it is. That's the list. I, I didn't even see the Akins thing coming. I was like, oh, nice little lob, and then a little uh, layup. He'll try here, and then he cocks it back. It's like, oh, he's going for he's going for murder. Mm. That's nice. Murder Respect charges it. out of state. Cool. Awesome. So, ah, Carter, this is great. This was awesome to just smile with you. Uh, we still got more to come, gang. We still got a little more of the show. We got a kid to sports we haven't talked about all week that needs some shine. Hockey, gymnastics, and women's basketball. But, Carter, we're going to go let you enjoy the rest of the day because this is the best part of batting leadoff in March Madness is that as Spartan fans, oh, my God, we can, we can enjoy the rest of Thursday, the rest of Friday, and then suffer heart attacks on Saturday. But, Carter... Really appreciate you, man. You're the best. I, I got to get the mic closer. Man, go green. If you support a team that lost in March Madness, go find yourself and go be better because I can't relate to that. Cannot relate. Simply can't relate. Imagine yeah. not even making this tournament. <laughs> imagine <laughs> imagine <laughs> not even making this tournament. <laughs> That's rich. That's really rich. Uh, not my team. Not my <laughs> team. Could be mine. Nope, not my team. Not my team. Carter, until next time, man. You're the best. See, Folks, sir. need to talk all your ears off about Nissan. That is right, gang. Because this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. Like, for example, the Yukon Huskies. They can only be described as an Armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they've landed the top overall seed in the NCAA tournament. They're one the favorites to win it all despite four of the power six conference champions standing in their way in the east region or another great example the oregon ducks are obviously this week's nissan rogue the team absolutely surprises all with the powerful performance in the final pac-12 tournament punching their ticket to the big dance they say win life go rogue and that's exactly what the ducks have done here so take the nissan rogue nissan pathfinder or nissan armada and go find your next big adventure shop NissanUSA.com. All right, we're going to get onto the basketball court again here, but for the women's side of the tournament, because the NCAA just loves Michigan State. Friday, when the women's tournament kicks off, it was the first game. It's your Michigan State Spartans who punched their ticket to the tournament under Robin Freilich. That's the first time in women's history, for the Spartans at least, that a first-year head coach brought the Spartans to the tournament. Sensational work. Now, the draw here for our Lady Spartans is not, not not ideal necessarily. Yes, they are favored by three and a half on FanDuel against North Carolina. That's who they opened up with. However, number one overall seed, South Carolina, who I'm pretty sure off the top of my head has lost just one game in the last two years. If I'm on or off, and I'm not on or off by much, that is a very good team coached by Don Staley, who quite frankly might be the best coach in either men's or women's basketball. So should the Spartans get by the Tar Heels? Again, this game is going to tip off 11.30 a.m., so this is something you're going to have coffee while you're watching this game on ESPN2. Should they get by the Tar Heels, they'll have a date with the South Carolina Gamecocks. And yikes. Um, So I'm watching the NCAA Women's Selection Show. They're talking about South Carolina, who is the favorites to win the national title on the women's side of things. And they're saying, wh- wh- where, where are they vulnerable? Where could the Gamecocks possibly get a little worried here? And it was two things. One, they're not outstanding at three-point shooting. All right, they're, they're just like pretty good at it is one thing they said. And the second thing they said is, well, sometimes they struggle to make the effort plays. I, I can only imagine that they struggle to make effort plays because – They're blowing out damn near every team by 20 or 30 points. And sometimes you get a little sleepy when you're up two touchdowns in a game. So that's the the two slights they had against South Carolina is that, yeah, their three-point shooting isn't extraordinary. And they just get bored during games. So that's going to be a really, really tough battle here. Again, should they move past the Tar Heels. But let's talk about another team that is white hot right now. We have... In my opinion, and probably a lot of yours' opinion, this might actually just be a fact. 
the biggest game of any sport on East Lansing soil since Michigan versus Michigan State in 2021 on the football field. It's still going to be Spartans and Wolverines. You guys know what I'm talking about. The Big Ten Hockey Tournament title at Mun Ice Arena. Now, during the week, tickets, unless you're a student, student tickets were still going for like 125 bucks on the secondary market. If you're a normal person, if you just want tickets to this game, they, they were upwards of $400. Now, they could come down a little bit because the public sale goes, uh, I think, Friday. But nevertheless, hottest ticket in town the last three years for the hottest team in town. Now, the Big Ten, they gave Michigan State some love for their all-conference team. Six Spartans got honors for them, honorable mentions. But we're going to pull out these two guys. Artem Levshinov, freshman of the year, defensive player of the year, and first team all Big Ten. Trey Augustine, he's that brick wall that's between the pipes. Freshman team, second team all Big Ten. I can't believe they didn't make first team all Big Ten, but whatever. And he is hot, guys. Two or less goals in six of the last eight games. He has a 92% safe percentage in seven of the last eight games. And also Adam Nightingale, Big Ten Coach of the Year for your Spartans. So Saturday evening, which actually could probably very well likely coincide with the Michigan State basketball game, I would bet a lot of money that it's going to be Spartans versus Tar Heels Saturday in primetime. Just like Spartans versus Wolverines, this will be 8 p.m. on Big Ten Network. So far this season, Michigan State 3-1 and one against the Wolverines. They got pounded pretty good early on at Mun, followed it with a win, beat them at Yost, and then beat them at Little Caesars Arena. So this is to go 4-1 and one against the Wolverines. And what's at stake other than, well, you already got your regular season banner. This would be for the tournament banner. If they win, there is a real scenario where Michigan State does land a one seed in the upcoming NCAA tournament. So that wouldn't be home ice, but still, you'd rather be the one seed in life than you wouldn't. Uh, let's talk about gymnastics here. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. The back-to-back -back Big Ten gymnastics team. All right. It's going to be a busy Saturday in East Lansing because all day at Jenison is the Big Ten. 10 meet. So this will be something to behold. If you are in East Lansing, I'm already jealous of you guys out there. But let's just, uh, you know, take a few seconds to recognize some names here because Big Ten, they announced their uh, their first teams, their second teams, and we have a smattering of Spartans on here. First team selections for gymnastics, Skyla Schulte, Gabrielle Stevens, and Nikki Smith, and Sage Kellerman. All right, that is tying a record for most on the first team which was set last year by this team. Uh, the second team also Delaney Harkness and Bailey Garcia and freshman Michaela Tucker. So that is four Spartans on the all big 10 honors right there. So support the Spartans, whether it's gymnastics, hockey, women's basketball, and of course, men's basketball, like we just talked about. Um, God, this is, this is fun. Oh man. Look at us just leaving this show with a smile. We're thriving. We're happy. Want to thank again Carter Elliott of Sleepers Media and Spartans Illustrated for joining today. We will most likely be back tomorrow. We're going to do a preview show of this North Carolina game unless Wagner absolutely stuns the world. And then I'll try to reach out to someone that covers Wagner over there to get them on the show here. But yes, you guys know it. Locked on Spartans, your team of green and white, five days a week, six days a week, or maybe even seven days a week this week. Oh, God. That felt nice. That felt really nice. All right, gang. Love you all. Go enjoy the rest of the first round of the tournament.